name is uh, Sami Khalil. I'm the uh, founder and CEO of Starbite. I'm going to moderate today this, uh, this panel that is going to talk about uh, um, uh, 5G, edge computing, and IoT, and how to address a couple of problems that uh, are really facing uh, the business side of it, how to, um, how to uh, solve some of those problems that uh, uh, are slowing the, uh, this new era of digital, digitalization uh, that this time the edge is is driving. So uh, to, to today, uh, the panel experts, uh, we have uh, Mark Thiele, uh, Edge Computing and Data Center uh, spokesman. And I would also say that uh, he's also an influencer in uh, the domain. Uh, we have uh, here with me, uh, Ning So, uh, which is uh, the head of Advanced Technical Service at Reliance Chio. Uh, we also have Nancy, Shamwell Online, she is the CEO at uh, Trilogy Network, and uh, Rajesh uh, Tiaji, which is an angel investor and a, an executive advisor for uh, telcos and, uh, and uh, IoT uh, companies. Where are we today? So we have, we have uh, computing being available everywhere. So small devices are now uh, able to, to compute and run computations. But if you think about it, we have computed, computed uh, all over the place. Your, uh, your uh, Wi-Fi router is able to do compute. Uh, there is compute uh, at the uh, uh, 5G tower, at the 4G LTE tower, at your ISP level, and so on and so forth. So, so computing is really ubiquitous. And with 5G, LoRaWAN, Starlink, and, and other technologies, we also have connectivity everywhere. So, um, so really everything is connected today. This is driving a global intelligence uh, around the globe. Uh, and hopefully this global intelligence will even be uh, uh, interplanetary. Uh, and uh, that global intelligence calls for a new uh, effort of digi digitalization. So, uh, a lot of companies started doing digitalization uh, about a decade ago when the cloud came in. And then uh, companies are still doing it, but there is a new uh, era of digitalization driven by edge computing. Uh, edge computing is uh, a paradigm of compute that leverages that infrastructure I was talking about that surround us, that's everywhere. Uh, and that's not centralized, so it's distributed everywhere. And, I believe in a decade will draw the cloud. So in a decade, the cloud will probably disappear or be something that would just process big data and store big data. But a real processing, the real thing, the action will happen at the edge. So with all those uh, uh, steps happening, uh, this, this uh, new era of edge uh, have some big problems to solve. So one of the problems is human resources. So how can you uh, handle the fact that you have a thousand uh, or hundreds of thousands of data centers across the globe where you have servers or your applications are running? How can you handle the investment of that? How can you uh, handle the complexity gap that, uh, that the people need to, uh, to get across skills-wise? How can you have your software running where it needs to be without heavy uh, and large uh, investment in infrastructure? How can you make sense of business use cases? Uh, it, is, it is hard to, uh, uh, it's really hard today to say like, uh, okay, we're, we're having this uh, new 5G, uh, for example, IoT solution that can improve uh, or optimize, for example, uh, your uh, your like process industrial process or, or your, your process in, in an oil and gas uh, um, uh, like field and so on uh, and then the last point is is market education so a lot of people don't really understand the edge today and confuse, uh, confuse cloud and edge or think that edge is only IoT and don't see the full potential of 5G and uh, our panel today uh, we'll, we'll address those uh, different questions 
And I will actually start with uh, with you, Mark. Uh, and uh, I would like, if, if you don't mind, if you can get, give uh, a picture of the footprint of edge uh, edge computing uh, data center wise. So so people have like can paint a bit. Uh, like I know you can paint a better picture than I did. Thanks, Sammy, and thanks for the introduction. Um, hello, everybody. Yeah. What is Edge um, is a big topic, and we'll probably cover some of the questions around Edge um, as we go through the panel. So what, I'd, what I'll preface with is, is an attempt at an answer to what um, Sammy mentioned. So Edge, edge computing um, is meant to solve a number of areas of opportunity from um, providing things like uh, 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 virtual reality to improved healthcare solutions to automation in factories to smart cities, smart homes, connected cars. We've all heard the stories about what edge might become. What's little understood really is what edge is likely to demand in the way of infrastructure, space, um, people, locations, et cetera. And um, to give one example, uh, Michael Dell was quoted as saying that edge is likely to be 100 times what the internet is. Um, so what I did was, uh, uh, and I put this in a blog a few months back, if you're bored and you want to see it, you can look to my LinkedIn page um, and you can see it from a couple of months ago. But um, what I did was some basic math on what that would mean. And I used it just against the hyperscaler cloud footprint under the assumption that a, a simple majority of compute that people consider the internet is offered via hyperscale data centers today. Um, I use that as my baseline for what the size of the internet was. And to put it in context, I only multiplied it by five, five times, which is 5% of what Michael Dell is suggesting the growth will be. And that adds up to 82 million square feet of new data center space required by 2030. 82 million square feet of new data center space. Um, that's more than all the data center space that's available today, right? Everywhere. Um, and that's only at 5%. So I think one of the most important aspects of what Sammy's working on, what Nancy's working on, what I'm working on, um, uh, what other folks on the panel are working on is that we're creating the beginnings of a platform that allows for people to get access to new services and capabilities via low latency and proximity to compute that in and of themselves will effectively plant the field for new opportunity going forward. So the hardest part, which is part of why Sammy probably um, organized this panel, the hardest part is getting people to realize that um, we, need, we have work to do to plant that field, to position ourselves for future growth. But once those first companies have planted that field, Companies like Trilogy Networks, companies like Taobai, companies like Edgevana, companies like Reliance and others, once they've planted that field, the opportunity for um, building on top of it is, um, is where the real excitement comes in. The ability to build new data structures, the ability to leverage the infrastructure built for smart cities to do um, uh, automotive, the ability to um, uh, bring uh, emergency healthcare to truck stops, uh, you name it, right? All of that will be built on this initial phase of enabling uh, edge access. So with that, I could, I could unfortunately bore everyone for hours with this. I will stop and pass it back to Sammy. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll go to Nancy here uh, because most of the, a good part of the edge is actually on the rural side and, and a lot of it is happening there. So can you, Nancy, give us a, a picture of what's happening on the rural side and, and how important edge computing is there and how big it is? Sure, I mean, so so I was really resonating with, uh, with, with what Mark was saying. Um, you know, the statistics that we're looking at show that, you know, in the next decade, 75% of the software that resides in the cloud today will reside at the edge. Okay, um, that doesn't minimize the cloud because it's still going to have to be driving that much more traffic. Um, now, one of the things I will push back on in the opening was that there's connectivity everywhere. 
because the reality is in rural, there isn't connectivity everywhere. I was um, on a trip just last week to Iowa, Missouri, and Nebraska. And when I left Omaha and went into those three states or you know the other two states in the course of the day, I had no bars. I had no bars the entire trip until I went into an enterprise and got on their Wi-Fi network. So if you start to think about, um, you know, the, the topic here, or this group is interested in IoT, um, they're interested in edge, they're interested in 5G, they're interested in, in ultimately the value add that is driven by those technologies, which are things like AI, there, there's really like this triangle of all of it, right? That, that says um, the connectivity of everything, everything. To everything, you know, the industrial auto revolution, in order to be able to execute about that, you've got to be able to have connectivity universally. If you look at rural America and, um, and you define rural or the USDA defines rural as under 5,000 people, but you look at IoT and big industrial IoT and some of the big industries that unlocking edge compute capability, industrial IoT, AI, cloud, um, machine learning, you know, where do those industries sit? Well, agriculture is, is massive. You know, it's a trillion dollar business end to end, plus trillion. Um, oil and or energy, energy production. And where are those assets? Those assets are sitting, quite frankly, in the middle of nowhere. So, so how do we add connectivity to them? Well, there's lots of infrastructure bills and this, that, and the other. If you go and you look at that infrastructure bill, that's saying that broadband is available at 25 meg and three meg up speed. That's the government definition of broadband in the year 2021. And you wouldn't be on a Zoom call with three meg of up speed. So you're certainly not going to run any sort of advanced precision ag application on that sort of speed. Now, Trilogy is, is um, you know, without putting in a, 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 a plug for our company, but, but what we've done is worked with, with companies like Terabyne and working with Mark, et cetera, to build a... a um, an association, not an industry association, but a, a, a group or network of interested companies, whether you're the rural carrier, whether you're a technology or part of that end-to-end -end solution, um, the network, and the applications that are going to ride on that network so that you can start to look at how do you enable 1.5 million square miles of rural America? Because if I'm John Deere and I want to put through um, autonomous out there, not like they have today. Today they have kind of self-driving with, uh, with GPS. But if I want real to really unlock the IoT capabilities of that tractor, I need to be able to make real-time decisions with it. And I've got to do that being connected to something that is close to me, whether that's on the tower, whether that's the farmhouse, whether that's in the tractor itself, what, somewhere that compute power has got to move out there and it's gonna have to be able to have dynamic bandwidth. So both up speeds and down speeds. And those are things that as we sit in, in our urban areas of the US, yeah, we have some difficulty, but not like you do out in the middle of nowhere. Now, it's important to a farmer in Stanton, Iowa, but it's important to John Deere as well, because if they could know that they had access to real connectivity um, ubiquitously, or at least to a large chunk, they could start to offer new services. They could do repairs downloading repairs, they could 
strip out some of the compute power out of those great big old tractors and they could bring the cost down. They could be more competitive. They could offer all sorts of new services. What could they do with the data that they might be pulling? How would they reuse that? So we've got an industry, Precision Ag, which is where I tend to spend my time because at this point, um, with the population explosion around the world, not necessarily in the US, um, the, the global organizations, including the Congress, view that we're going to have food problems in the next 28 crop cycles. That's not very long, 28 crop cycles, 28 years. So we've got to be able to find ways to help farmers get more out of their land without a drop of water or incremental drop of water or incremental um, acre of land. And you're going to have to do that with technology, which is IoT, advanced IoT, which is going to be driven off of edge compute. So it's this great circle of things that are gonna have to happen to, to bring connectivity out around the world, or certainly around the United States to be able to really unlock the capabilities that we started this conversation talking about. Um, I, I found Mark's comment on the amount of data center um, capability really interesting because because the reality is it's gonna to be too expensive to run around and build a whole bunch of new data centers. So you're gonna be migrating that. Those hyperscalers are going to need to find ways to connect with the local guys out in the middle of nowhere who have data centers or capability. And that, that you know again, it becomes a commercial for Trilogy is we're trying to pull from the hyperscalers through a hundred uh, regional hubs to the 1,000 rural carriers because there are 1,000 rural carriers and they all have varying degrees of connectivity available today. So, so there is an exciting opportunity in front of us. Um, some of these markets could do amazing things, but there are huge uh, connectivity and edge opportunities. They're problems, but they're also massive opportunities that the people in this room and hopefully listening on the on the phone um, can 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 move into. I'll say one last thing, and then I'll hush for a little while. Um, I was I was working with the um, one of the PhDs that that is a part of the Grand Farm, which is a is a very innovative test site. They've got about 250 ag applications going on a live farm up in North Dakota, which is is working towards being the precision ag capital of the world. And I'm guessing they'll get there. And they said, you know, you have to really think about compute and edge and where things lay in in really three buckets. One is, again, I'm gonna use a farm example, on board. You might have a robot that's, that's not very smart, but it can do some limited functionality. It's laying seeds out. Um, it may have the ability to, to see obstacles in front of it, so it's not gonna run over the dog. And that could have enough compute power and enough activity right there on the little robot cost-effective. But if you're gonna to start to run a drone out over a field, and then you maybe wanna do a drone and a robot so that the drone goes out and finds things and then sends the robot to do a mission, you're not gonna do that over a mobile phone connection. You're gonna to have to do that at the edge. You're gonna to have to have low latency, real-time decision-making, and great ability to accomplish things. And that farmer wants to keep that traffic local. And you know, it, it can't go across country. It just won't, it won't work. And then you're gonna have great big things that you can do in the cloud. So today, if I, you know, so I my my uh, my example of that edge solution is they might put those drones up to make sure that they could do very precision spraying that that would target 
um, one part of a crop group and make sure it doesn't spray its neighbor because you don't want to kill your neighbor's crops and different pesticides are important for different types of crops. But then there's that stuff that goes in the cloud, right? So I may have a company that has swarms of, of high commercial drones that I want to go send out and look at the, uh, at, at, at a thousand acre cattle ranch and, and, and understand what the migration patterns of the cattle are. And I might suddenly see some weird anomaly. I check it once a month or twice a year that I might then send an edge solution out. I might take a drone out to kind of look a little further at that particular space. And I might realize that I just actually have to get in my car and go kill the coyote that's, that's driving those guys around. So, so this, where the connectivity, how the connectivity is, what that connectivity has got to do, what that latency is, how you're gonna compute that, that, uh, that data is gonna be uh, a lot of sizes fits, you know, it's not one size fits all, or economically, it's not going to be one size fits all. I think you uh, you painted a pretty good picture. You painted a pretty good picture of uh, how edge computing is important in rural areas and and in ag in, in general. Uh, I want to I want to move now to uh, Rajesh uh, and ask uh, uh, a question that's related to to telco. So. As, as, as uh, applications uh, move to, to the edge and edge uh, gets uh, more and more important, uh, one of the, uh, one of the uh, uh, organizations or uh, corporates and enterprises, they have a lot of uh, edge-capable comp- edge uh, uh, infrastructure or telcos, uh, including the rural ones. And, uh, and, and they're racing against the hyperscalers too to be part of edge computing and, and run application instead of the hyperscalers. Uh, 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 Rajesh, uh, what, are, what do you think about this race and how it will go? Uh, thanks, uh, Sammy. And uh, uh, good evening, everyone. It's uh, Rajesh Tiangi. The question that uh, Sammy is raising is uh, really important, uh, especially for the operators uh, uh, in America. And the reason for that is, uh, and I think this goes back to the topic of today, that we have the ideation of the edge, uh, but we need to now move it to the revenue generating. And, and that's where uh, I think a lot of uh, stakeholders are struggling because the business models are still not clear. It's going to play a lot. And, uh, and uh, while everybody understands the role of the edge and there is no major uh, um, questions about that. Uh, business models are not clear, and that's where I think operators are still struggling. Clear to the role of hyperscaler, for example, and the role of a mobile operator. And we have done some work in this space uh, in the sense that uh, uh, there will be space for all stakeholders. In the sense that some applications will require private edge, what we call private uh, MEC, where the operators will have full control over deployment uh, and the application onboarding and management of the application. While uh, certain applications will run on the public edge, if you will, which will be managed by the hyperscaler. Although you know, the hyperscaler might have some relationship with the operators uh, to uh, some of these uh, private edge uh, applications. But I think there will be two classes of application where you will need the hybrid model with applications will run in the private edge and some will run in the public edge, depending on the latency requirement. And then that's where I think a lot of work is still need to be done in the sense that, uh, let me just give one example. Uh, for example, in the connected car, uh, if, for example, we just move at the current rate of deployment of the edge, uh, just like how mobile operators are doing, uh, in order for us to, min, uh, to provide, say, sub 10 millisecond latency for connected car, uh, one has to undertake at least 10 times the deployment uh, of their network. And this I'm talking about 5G core, as well as 5G connectivity that will get connected to the compute. So that kind of investment will require a solid business case behind it. 
and and that's where things are not clear because if you look at the price uh, a certain application which will run on these uh, uh, mobile edge is not clear there is no blueprint exists uh, there uh, so somebody will have to reverse engineer in terms of the capital investment required uh, and uh, how many applications uh, one particular edge node will handle how much it can handle and based on that some roi calculation will happen and then that's the work that the operators are doing right now uh, hopefully that answers and maybe we can expand the more uh, later on yeah thank you thank you uh, rajesh for uh, for the uh, your point of view here and uh, more details about how how uh, telcos are looking into into edge compute uh, uh, i can see in uh, in the in the chat that uh, somebody mentioned uh, aws uh, outpost for example and this is this is edge infrastructure but uh, it is it is a tiny bit of of that and uh, maybe if we have time we can circle back to mark uh, and probably give you uh, a way more detailed answer here. Uh, so um, when we talk about when we talk about uh, application running uh, at the edge, uh, whether that be uh, in rural areas, uh, nearby data centers, uh, it has to run on on 5G, and and that brings the question of ORAN and um, how to run compute there, uh, and that's a question for uh, for Ning that. Uh, and so, so Ning, how how are we looking into implementing that uh, compute running at, at the edge in those uh, ORAN and private 5G deployments? Uh, and uh, what are the use cases that will uh, uh, come to life and maturity uh, first uh, in that space? The definition of edge differs when you speak to uh, different corporations. Uh, if you look at from a data center, so data center, you have different scales of data center. Currently, if you look at traditional telco or cloud provider data center, you have the mega data center sits at a major junction of the networking. You also have this much smaller data center, maybe sits all the way at your city block or near your house. That's the traditional endpoints of the telco network. Many of them has been reclassified as data centers and very smaller ones. Now, those certainly for many corporations qualify them at, as edge. If you push it further down, many of those edge extends into the business promise, uh, premises and into consumer homes. And that's a good definition edge. edge. And then if you go deeper into your vehicle, into the devices embedded in the appliances, in the body, we talked about body area network, and into your medical cabinets, into your pills you are taking, that's certainly another level of edge. So I have worked in my previous, I, I just got out of uh, Reliance Geo, uh, if you are from India or you work with Indian companies, you certainly know Reliance Geo. That's the largest company in India and largest company in Asia. Uh, I was handling their research and development teams here in the U.S. outside of India. Uh, just got out. and uh, But my previous job, we, we work with all different definitions of edge. Now, the previous panel speaker mentioned there is a omnipresence of network doesn't matter what your definition of edge is. You have to rely on the omnipresence of the network, which today we are still struggling, right? The previous panel mentioned, sometimes when you go to rural area, you won't get a signal. Now we are hoping that Starlink somehow is gonna fix that. And, uh, um, and also you are hearing people are saying that, well, 5G is gonna fix that, but a lot of people didn't know that 5G's density of your cell, micro cell, that's your antennas sitting in the pole, is at least four to, four to eight times more than your 4G cell. So your micro cell is very, very expensive because you have acquired the land, acquired the rights to put it there. 
But as the frequency increases, it's law of the physics. Your interference increases, so your reach, the distance is much shorter. So you require a much higher density. And also as your population density increases, and as your bandwidth requirements, your speed increases up required by your application, then your, your uh, uh, number of the, the microcell increases. All of this comes at a very high price. If you look at how much AT&T and uh, Verizon bid for 5G spectrum, those goes into trillions, some of them. If you want to have a full nationwide coverage with ideal uh, penetration, we're talking about the spectrum paired together with the deployment of the, the microcell. And then because of that, you, you have to optimize that your cost infrastructure. That's where you see a lot of small cell solutions, all of those are beginning being a package, even Wi-Fi 6 being packaged as part of your 5G solution, because depending on microcell itself becomes uh, unaffordable. Okay. Have yes. A, have a question for you. So we've talked about three things tonight. We've talked about distributed. So today we've talked about three different topics that are very different. One is distributed versus centralized computing, which is edge computing or in the cloud, which we've been we've been going back and forth on that metric since before I was born. Um, second, we're talking about compute, where the compute is taking place, we're computing. We've also talked about getting broadband to the to the to the world. That's different than IoT. And then finally, we talk about IoT edge. And I argue the definition of edge should be the edge, the razor edge, the end, which is the sensor, the device, the appliance that tells you when the appliance needs something done, or you know the dog collar, the whatever, some some device, something that that, that talks versus um, edge. Edge, if you have computing at the edge, then that's that's a PC, that's an embedded PC, that's a, that's got a microprocessor with some power. I say that the real edge is the thermostat, which can't compute two plus two very hard, you know, I mean, it can, but that's it. And that's the edge, that's the ultimate edge. And so when we talk about these different things, and I think we're confusing them, and I think we ought to get clarity on what is the edge, what's IoT, and distributed versus centralized computing. My two, that's my two. Uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, may you need to answer the question? Uh, precisely. And, and I, I agree with your definition, but your definition is, I said, one of the three definitions at the very beginning I gave. Right. The others are wrong, by the way. Uh, well, which is fine, right? Yeah. For, for, for their own business, right? For your business, you are precisely right. Well, we, we say, if, we say that the, if we say the edge is like some rural area that has three megabits up, 15 down or whatever. That's, we're talking about, talking about computing. Talking about I, I, I get you. I get you. IoT. Everything has to come at a cost, right? So a business, in order to say something's right or something's wrong, what is the cost benefit? How much money are you bringing in versus how much cost to sustain that business, right? Ultimately, we are all in this to make money, not losing money. That's a business number one. Okay, so what I'm trying to paint a picture is several things have to come together. Number one, you have to have the cost side taken care of. Who is going to invest the trillions of dollars to support the edge definition you get? Second, what is your killer app that I'm is going to bring in? I'm suggesting that the, the, the razor edge is not supported by Verizon at and Perfectly fine. Per so, 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 Whoever supports that, okay, got to make money. And the man money got to flow everywhere to make it worthwhile, right? So, so far, if you look at all of this, there has been a lot of spending with very, very little uh, business profit, okay? Which is typical at the very beginning of any business evolution or revolution, right? So that happened to 4G and happened to 3G. And uh, it's still happening to, to Starlink and so on, but everybody has a longer vision, believe ultimately this all will pay off.
Okay, so that is the reason that we say that, okay, where is the compute is gonna happen? The compute is gonna happen the same way as the further you push into the edge, into your razor blade edge or whatever the edge you call it, away from the center, your cost of deployment dramatically increases because you putting a compute CPU into a uh, microwave oven or in, put into your body like a device you wear, like I'm wearing a Samsung Watch 3, right? It, it, the cost is much higher than you put it somewhere in a edge data center, I call it central office, okay? So all of those things has to make sense. So what I'm here, I just got out of my corporate job, so I'm now a VC investor. What I'm doing is I'm trying to identify the killer app, number one. I see a lot of problems, right? I, I was doing research and development for, for pretty much all my life. And uh, I was very fortunate that I was one of the very few pioneers who started doing cloud before there was cloud, before the cloud definition was given. And so when you're looking at all of this, every revolution, there was tremendous amount of challenges and problems, okay? But there is a glimpse, glimpse of hope of looking at where the application is, where is the killer app that's gonna make all of this worthwhile, make all of this investment worthwhile, okay? I see a lot of challenges. Where is compute happening when I, my team was doing research and development using various, so I, I had a deep discussion with Sammy, various uh, uh, software, be it Kubernetes and be it something else, right? And, and using in, uh, in the edge application, the further we push down and the more problem we got, the higher scale goes, the more problem we have. Everything has to make sense. So. Compute can happen anywhere as long as you put your money there. That's the key, right? So right now is when you put your money there, will you get a decent return on your investment? So right now I'm looking for the killer app and I'm looking for the maturity of the technology to manage, deploy, maintain that killer app. Those are the challenges I'm seeing every day. So I would argue that the compute at the edge, if you put a lot of power in the edge, that's, that's expensive, right? But if, if you're talking about a nest thermostat, you don't need a lot of compute. You need data gathering, you submit it up, upward in the, in the chain to an edge device like this guy has. It's, a, it's an edge, not a razor edge, but an edge that can make some compute decisions. Or it can go further up to the cloud and make a big decision, some AI, some ML, or whatever the buzzword of the day is, and then and then push down the decision, which is turn on the compressor or turn off the compressor, which is the ultimate thing that the razor edge device only knows. Compressor on, compressor off. Two things. Again, right? So so I have seen plenty of devices. I have tested many, many devices in my own lab. And the the, the issue again, let me pick it again. The issue is not with data collection. The issue is not with data uh, um, uh, uh, streaming. The issue is to find enough benefit, uh, a cost benefit, or the revenue streams, new revenue streams for the edge infrastructure provider Right? Not for the manufacturer that sell you that device. They will make money. Those are very clear. But however, whoever provides this service or utilizes this service, okay, that actually maintains, operates this service day in and day out, how do you make them see the benefit? How do you compute that you have enough money there that make them worth a while? Yes. That is the important part that is missing today. I would disagree, Arthur. We make devices. The devices that we make are necessary even for the, Absolutely. For the end device. Yep. But the money is in the service, the monthly service for whatever product we do. And they're making the money today. Today, they're getting ROI okay. today for having devices. Uh, yeah, uh, Mike, I think Maybe I can... uh, some great points you're making. Uh, I see this. 
Yeah, I see that. Uh, yeah, let me let me be here. Brother. So so I know that uh, going from centralized to distributed is scary. It's scary for a lot of people. It also doesn't work for hyperscalers. They want the data to go to them. But the cost of compute, the cost of chips is going lower and lower. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to have chips on the road. Every few foot, you'll have computing chips that will assist cars driving around. So if a Tesla relies on the cloud to self-drive, you will have more accidents with that. But anyways, uh, let me, uh, let me uh, 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 go back here to uh, the whole panel and uh, circle back onto uh, how today we can make sense of, uh, of, uh, of edge computing, 5G or, or IoT, and what are the logical steps that we should follow to, uh, to get a, a project or get our product into enterprises? And that's, that's an open question uh, for, for, for any uh, of you guys that want to uh, 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 give feedback or take on, on the question. So I said, like, uh, when, when, when we have a 5G-enabled uh, product, edge computing product, or an IoT product, and we want to push that into enterprises, sell that, like, how do, we make the, how do we make the case? What are the steps that we should follow? Like, is it like selling that directly? Should we go through a POC? How long should that POC last? And, 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 and so on and so forth. Let, let me take a crack at that. Again, um, so we, we have done all kinds of case studies, business studies, uh, how, to, how to do that, right? Ultimately, when you are approaching an enterprise and do something, typically you only have two ways of selling something. Number one, you are enabling them to generate new revenue. That is everybody's preferred business model. You tell them that, hey, here is my surface. By the way, using this surface, you can generate A, B, C, D, E, new products on new surfaces. If you make money, I make money. That's a preferred way, but it's very difficult. So far, I think we are still very much looking for that killer app, right? The killer app is not there just yet. The second is, okay, I can sell you this. I will help you to digitize your operations to give you cost savings, okay? So automation, eliminating some of your process um, and simplify your operations, all of those are cost saving efforts. So using the 5G, using the, the uh, uh, edge cloud, that many of the things that you used to have had human being goes through a very tedious process to do it. Now you can automate that. And, and one of the easiest one is inventory control management. Inventory control management is every across all industry. So once you have a good application, that be it using a tag, using some kind of inventory identifier, that you can automate that process, a lot of people will buy from you, utility companies, any companies. And second, we have seen but the cost saving is to do a uh, uh, in the uh, the, the uh, uh, training or on the job uh, video assisted uh, maintenance, for instance, be it with the medical field or the, the field service and the maintenance, and all of those things teaches you how to fix this machine without doing some you know, going back and, and taking a class. So a lot of those things are cost savings and making things work for you to save you money that is easier to quantify, right? So those are what I call low hanging fruit, but the ultimate goal, the holy grail of conquering this, I don't think has been identified yet. That is, how do you generate the new business, new revenue to make the pie bigger instead of just you know, cutting, cutting costs? Cutting costs is nice. It's nice. It's essential that every 3G, 4G, every technology always started with cost cutting, right? That's where what is gets you into the door. But to get you really far, you have to generate new business. And we are still not quite there. The question is uh, how do we sell it to this uh, ecosystem? Right? And for that, 
uh, for me, uh, the important part is to understand the value chain because it's a full stack uh, solution. While we are talking about the edge, it's not like one monolithic system we are talking about. We are talking about full stack. It comes with uh, connectivity, uh, it's a 4G or 5G connectivity. Uh, then somebody else is providing your software and hardware infrastructure. Somebody else is providing the application enablement. And then application will write the application which will have this edge. Understanding the value chain and how the value chain is divided among these players is going to be critical in terms of uh, how to sell and to sell. Them. And the second, uh, going back to the previous question about uh, where these applications will reside, uh, Razor Edge versus, uh, you know, whole Edge versus the centralized edge. Uh, I think, I think the, the question is that in some applications, of course, uh, a thermostat can do, you know, a, a simple view and uh, you can put your software there and it will be fine. Uh, I think we are not talking about that thermostat example and the use case here. We are talking about is an application which requires significant compute cycles and requires sub 10 millisecond latency. And I think the, the problem that we are trying to solve is that if those type of applications continue to run in the devices, uh, for example, in case of uh, say connected car where you have hundreds of those applications are running in the car, you can run fine, but the problem that uh, the industry is trying to solve is that how many of those applications can move to the edge, that the application lifecycle management becomes uh, easier for them. Because think about application lifecycle management of millions of cars versus thousands of these edge nodes. And that's where probably the biggest cost savings uh, will come from. And I think, in my opinion, the app may not be the app itself. Maybe how we manage the applications, the network in a much more effective manner. And I think that's where industry has to really work and create a business model. Cool. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Rajesh. Uh, uh, I remember we talked uh, before about uh, the role of Edge not only in IoT or, uh, or commerce, but also in applications uh, like our experience working from home and, and, uh, and, and other experiences because they are not that great with the cloud. And, and with all the usage we have today, and all the data flowing back and forth to the cloud, the centralized model doesn't make uh, a lot of sense uh, scale-wise. So, Mark, uh, do you want to kind of like uh, add it to that? And can how can we make a business case for other steps, not just IoT? Yeah, I mean, the, the I apologize for, for being a little bit um, controversial as compared to um, um, one of the previous speakers, but. Before I directly answer your question, um, Sammy, I want to paint a picture for everyone in the audience. Um, uh, you're in; uh, those of you who are present at the at the event are in Texas. And if you took a boat and did much cruising uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, what would you run into, or at least see, if not run into, a um, an oil rig, right? Now let's go back in time to 1900 even 1920 for that matter. And um, we all are in a boat and one of us comes up and says, you know what? There's a lot of oil underneath that 500 feet of water. Too bad we can't get to it. That's where edge is today. People are assuming that using today's technology the way it's always been used to leverage edge is the only way to get to edge. So their models on what costs are, their models on difficulty of ownership, their models on, on what a server needs to be, what a data center needs to be, are all based on what their existing knowledge is. Well, I'm here to tell you that the edge is the Gulf of Mexico in 1920. And somebody figured out there was a lot of oil underneath there, so much oil, that it didn't matter what it took to figure out how to drill down there and get it, they would do it. And so the people that will win at the edge are people that use their imagination to bust assumptions about how IT can be deployed and managed and create differentiation 
for any numbers, any number of areas of opportunity from, from, I mean, you know, one of the things that uh, almost always disappoints me when I'm speaking or uh, debating the issue of edge is how few people talk about customer experience specifically. Um, if I were to tell you that you needed the capability of an iPhone 10 in 2004, while you were using your, um, your uh, uh, Motorola phone, you would have said, why, this works great. I can do my email, I can make phone calls, this works great. And then in, in 2007, when you had your first iPhone, if I were to tell you that you needed 5G on that iPhone, you'd be like, why, this is the best thing ever. I've got like 5,000 apps available to me. Well, there are 2,000 apps on the phone now and you have 5G connectivity and there are still times when you can't get what you want on the phone. And the same thing is true at the edge. Once you break the log jam of delivering a cost-effective solution um, to the edge, you will immediately create differentiation between you and anyone else in your space. And, and even if that differentiation is only that the customer perceives a, a deeper interaction with your applications with better performance, if that's the only thing they perceive, you've already won the war. You have already won the war. There is no going back. And so, to, you know, final answer to, to Sammy's question, Edge will be about customer experience in the end. But beyond that, the amount of devices that will be talking to each other and that those bits of data going from device to device or machine to device, et cetera, et cetera, don't wait in human terms for information and answers. They wait in machine terms. So you can't say, oh, it's only 200 milliseconds. A human doesn't even notice 200 milliseconds for one transaction. A machine is practically gonna shut down in 200 milliseconds. If it's a safety issue, 200 milliseconds doesn't cut it. So these are areas of opportunity that once that spigot is turned on for, for industry, for customer retail, for entertainment, for factory floor, uh, for medical, for um, road management, for traffic management, for building, uh, smart buildings, smart cities, et cetera, et cetera. Once that's turned on, there is no going back. There is no, it's good enough. It's whatever you can get being within five milliseconds of where you are. Uh, and so that's, you know, that's, that's my um, story and I'm sticking to it. Can I add to his point? Um, uh, sure. Because I, 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 he, is, he is absolutely spot on. Um, in, in the rural industry, uh, I know that, that they liken it to what was electricity like in 1930? And what did you expect to be able to do with it, right? I mean, and how it revolutionized the country, right? It opened up whole new areas, right? When, when suddenly you could have air conditioning in Texas and California, people could stand to live there. Um, it, it, it is this spigot that is going to open and forever change the world. It, it is, you know, the, being on this cusp of, the industrial 4.0 revolution, everything connected to everything is going to completely change the way that we live, we work, we play. You know, if you, if you, if you go back to the simple um, diagram that he was just talking about of suddenly everybody's got an iPhone, well, new business models will exist, new businesses will exist. Who would have ever thought that some, but something like Uber or Lyft would exist? They only exist because everybody has an iPhone or an iPhone equivalent. So, so you know, how do you sell this? You know, that that's that's such a broad question. You've really got to break it down to who, who's the intended market, right? Or is this a residential application? Is this an industrial application? The economies are going to follow in scale and mass, right? Um, in, in how do you start to rationalize putting 5G, putting advanced edge into low density areas? Well, 
if I'm doing something really big with an oil field or really massive with with the uh, can you finish a little quickly? We're uh, we're kind of like running out. Of time okay, here. that's fine. It's just it, it's scale, and once you get scale, all these other small businesses will be able to be accomplished, right? Telehealth, telemedicine, etc. So it's it's just a huge, huge, huge market and an opportunity. And and Mark's right. It's we're on on the cusp, it's what we make of it. Okay, thank you all for, uh, for uh, uh, your uh, point of view on those uh, different questions. Uh, again, the edge is, uh, is something new that uh, needs uh, efforts of all and a point of views of all to be uh, defined and, uh, and get to the point where uh, it, is a, uh, it is a utility that uh, actually is as necessary as, as electricity. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, so uh, I will leave you with this uh, last uh, thought uh, about, uh, about something that's obvious to everybody and how edge can cost a lot of uh, costs. So just, uh, just think about uh, updating your apps or updating your software. So, and think of like, oh, your, your, your software is one meg and you have a million devices and you need to update them and how, 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 how much time you can update that software, uh, knowing that the software is the feature and the intelligence and what makes your product uh, better than anything else, how much that will cost to download that update from the cloud for a million device uh, uh, a couple times a day or just, just once a, a, a week. That, that's the cost just of that is, is millions of dollars who can afford that when, when, the, when software and updating software is very important when we're talking about edge and planetary intelligence in general. And this is why the edge is important. Uh, if you're using Microsoft and you never noticed, Microsoft at some point uh, added a peer-to-peer -peer update feature. So instead of downloading updates from the cloud, you download it from uh, other computers in your network. And there is a reason for that. The cost of all those Microsoft computers downloading updates is huge. Even Microsoft sees that. And, and that was like my last point here about the edge. Uh, thank you everybody uh, for attending. Thanks to the great panel here. And then I'm giving the mic back to Gary. Thank you very much. Can we give uh, Sammy and the panel a big round of applause here?